from the podium. Uh, well, in, in the coming minutes, I, will, uh, I hope I will succeed to share uh, my people's story. And I'm sure that some aspects of the things that I'm going to um, say, you are familiar um, uh, with that. All right. Some of the aspects that the Palestinian people facing in Palestine by the Israeli regime and the state of Israel are very similar to what the South Africans face in the apartheid regime. Um, and some as aspects are not, so um, uh, uh, I will try to give the story and the modern history of the Palestinian people in Palestine and what's going on in these days uh, under this uh, uh, system, a uh, political system called uh, Israel. Uh, when I say the word Israel, I mean the political system, the state. When I say Palestine, I mean the area, the place, the homeland of the Palestinian people. Uh, so that's correct. Um, one of the four uh, friends who represents uh, different uh, human rights NGOs dealing with the Palestinian rights and uh, mainly the right to return of the Palestinian refugees. Uh, but we are all Palestinians and this is maybe one of the issues to talk about. It could be the forgetting Palestinians who are living inside the state of Israel and uh, unfortunately became a minority inside the state of Israel and a minority in their homeland. Um, so allow me to start with the 1948, which is the year that the state of Israel was established. Uh, and it's the same year, maybe important year in South Africa that the apartheid regime uh, started formally. Um, uh, at that year, the uh, Zionist movement occupied 72% of Palestine. And at 1967, it completed the occupation and occupied the whole Palestine. The Palestinians who lived in the first part, the first occupied part of Palestine, which became the state of Israel, were about 900,000 Palestinians at that time. During the establishment of the state, the state and the Zionist movement before the establishment of the state expelled 80% of the population. 750,000 Palestinians had been expelled outside of their homeland at 1948-49 and became refugees, mainly in the neighbor countries around Palestine, Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Egypt, and some of them in the West Bank and Gaza Strip. These parts were not occupied yet till 1967 who remained inside the state of Israel, only 150,000 Palestinians. And this population became formally citizens of the state of Israel. But since 1948 and 1966, these people, these 150,000 Palestinians inside the state of Israel, suffered from or of discrimination, of military regime, of confiscating their lands, of confiscating their rights. They became, and they still are, second class citizens in their homeland because the state is defined as a Jewish state. And okay. So uh, it, it's not a normal situation that you live in your homeland as second class citizen. This is part of our struggle for the return of our people who had been expelled in 1948 and the State of Israel prevented them or not, not allowing them till today to come back to their houses and villages. At the same time, almost, 
when they had been expelled outside of the homeland, the government of Israel captured their villages, their lands, their property, and their houses. During the coming years, it destroyed most of the houses of the Palestinian villages, and, they er and it erased them from the landscape. When you visit Palestine in the side, inside Israel today, you will not see any of these 600 Palestinian villages used to be in that landscape for hundreds of years, till 1948. The State of Israel confiscated, or actually robbed, the property of these refugees, the land of these refugees, and uh, uh, reused them for the benefit of the new population, the Jewish immigrants who come in during the year to live and to get citizenship in the state of Israel. Many families, immediately after the war ended, wanted to come back to their homes and villages, but the Israeli government decided, it's a very clear decision, and we have the protocol of that meeting from June 1948, not to allow them to come back, and they gave orders to the army to shoot any, anyone, any family, any civilian who trying to come back and to enter their home, their, his home or her home. Thousands of Palestinians had been killed just because they tried in 1948-49 to get back to their homes. Um, Part of the Palestinians who remained inside the state of Israel um, were not occupied 1948, actually. This is my village. My village called Musherfi. It's very close to the famous city of Nazareth. And um, the war at 1948 ended very close to my village. And a uh, ceasefire was declared, and my village was uh, attacked. Uh, on the end of 1948, uh, our families had been um, forced to leave the village for two weeks, but every day they send one young man or two young men to see what is going in the village, and uh, every day they're reporting that no one is there. The Israeli soldiers have just attacked the village, destroyed a few houses, took the cows and the cattle, uh, 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 and maybe took some food from the houses and that's it. So they came back after two weeks to the village and the war ended. But in the Rhodes Agreement of 1949, when Jordan and the new state of Israel had the agreement to finish the war, the Israeli side asked for more land in the middle of the country. And the King Abdullah of Jordan was a very good friend to the Zionist movement and the state of Israel. He said, why not? We'll give you more land. So they gave us. And we actually had been annexed to the state of Israel on March 1949. And at that uh, uh, meeting, the uh, colonial representative of friend of France and uh, Britain uh, sitting in the room and the French minister had a pen and the color of the pen was green and he just drew a line and said this will be the new border of the state of Israel and he drew that in green color and this is the way how the border of the state of Israel became called the green line. So the green line dividing between the state of Israel, which is the part was occupied 1948, and the West Bank, that we know the situation in the West Bank under military regime and in, in Gaza Strip. This part of the Palestinians who became minority, which is very important for us to remind, we are not normal minority. We have been minoritized during the process of ethnic cleansing that the Zionist movement and the state of Israel did at 1948-49. I already mentioned the, the support from the uh, of the military regime and became second class second class 
uh, uh, population in the in the state uh, of Israel today. The other important aspect of our life to understand that the uh, um, the catastrophe that the Palestinian people faced at 1948, which is called in Arabic Nakba, <coughs> Nakba means catastrophe, it's still ongoing till today. Nakba is not a historical event that ended at some time in the history. It's part of a long process that's still going till today. Expulsions of Palestinians, even inside Israel, of course in the West Bank, in what so-called Area C, uh, uh, the government of Israel till today making pressure on the Palestinian population in the southern side of Israel, which called the desert of the Naqab, the Negev, in Hebrew, the Naqab in Arabic, pushing them and concentrating them in townships for the purpose of confiscating their lands and their property. These fights between the Palestinians inside Israel and the Palestinian population is still ongoing till today. That's correct, you will hear that the Palestinians inside Israel enjoy some democracy. Yes, we are voting, with the, there are elections in the state of Israel, 50% of the Palestinians in Israel taking part in the elections. Uh, others don't. We have internal debates around this uh, issue, but we can enjoy some of the civilian rights, which is correct, but we can say that the Israeli apartheid is much cleverer than, the, than South African apartheid. Because you will not see that clearly written that the, the state will dis discriminate the Palestinians negatively, but you can understand that when you uh, realize that the state defined as a Jewish state. So it means it, 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 it works for the benefit of one ethnic group, the Jewish group, and not for the Palestinians. Even it takes from the Palestinians given the uh, uh, Jewish side. So in, in, in this uh, aspect, we can say that what we are facing is one aspect of the uh, uh, apartheid. You, of course, are aware about the situation in the Middle East and the Palestinian people became uh, maybe pushed in the corner and the Palestinian case became less important for the international community. We are here in order to or try at least to put again the Palestinian issue on the table or on the agenda of some activists and NGOs and maybe we will reach some parliament members or some uh, uh, governmental uh, uh, parts of the government or ministers in order to try to raise, to raise the awareness regarding the Palestinian issue. Palestinian people needs, still need the support of the international community to make pressure on the state of Israel in order to seek and achieve the freedom and the independence and the justice in Palestine. Um, a precursor to uh, a very important meeting that's going to take place where not only Omar but the other guests will also be speaking on Monday evening, uh, the 5th of September at 7 p.m. at the District 6 uh, Homecoming Museum. I'd like to um, urge you to join um, uh, you know, that particular uh, meeting. I'm also particularly, um, this is a very special occasion for us. We have many, uh, many Palestinian speakers, but it's a special occasion for us because we have our allies from the Jewish community. And it's so important for us in the Muslim community um, to recognize that. You know, I, I just want to take you to uh, something, my brother, just to show you, um, and I'm speaking to our Muslims as well. In 2014, 200,000 Muslims participated in a, a, a march for Gaza. There was ne never, ever before was there such a big civil society, even during the apartheid years. We we're very proud of that. But what were the reasons why Muslims, many Muslims, supported the struggle of Palestinians? Because many of those same people 
<coughs> voted DA just a few weeks ago. You know, of course you can vote for the DA. But we know our community, they are also suffering from racism against blacks. You know, how does it come? Because anti-Semitism, hatred of Jews, and racism against black works together, what we call intersectionality. <coughs> so it's important that we have the proper reasons for supporting the state of Israel. We are not anti-Jew, and it's not a strategy. This should be part of our aqidah, our belief. If we believe that Allah creates people who are Jews out of no fault of their own, and they are lesser human beings or they are evil, there is something wrong with our aqidah. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when there was a funeral, of someone, he was sitting with his companions, he stood up in honoring and respecting this funeral. And thank goodness we have this companion of the Prophet who, who said, Ya Rasulullah, this is a funeral of a Jew. And we are standing up, he said, yes, because this is also a nafs. This person also has a ruh, the same ruh, the breath of Allah which is inside of every one of us, inside of every human being. This comes from Allah and will return to Allah. So very important that and we would like to welcome our, our Jewish allies. It's so important for us. It heals us from anti-Semitism and it makes our struggle even more stronger and so that we can be able to have the right reasons as to why we are supporting Palestinians and every oppressed person on this earth. Every mustada'afin, no matter what their religion, no matter what their color of their skin, if they are oppressed, it is our responsibility as Muslims to stand as Allah says, Kunu qawwamina bil shuada alillah. O believers, be witnesses for justice, um, to justice, you know, as witnesses to Allah, even if it is against yourself. So it's easy to be for justice if the Muslims are being persecuted. But if you have to stand against Muslims and for non Muslims, it's very difficult. And this is what our Jewish allies are doing. They are standing <coughs> against their own community. <laughs> Even if it's against yourself, against your parents, against whoever it may be. And that is why we are really um, uh, proud of them. And I'd like to urge you to support this cause on Monday evening, inshallah.